At any given moment in your life, you are choosing between two pictures or evaluations of yourself. Your choices include the one offered by your soul or the higher self, which I think of as the voice of God, and the one offered by the ego or your false idea of yourself. You decide how you view yourself and how you view others as well. Essentially, you accept either ego's picture of yourself and others or that of your higher spiritual self. In every moment of your life, you have the option to choose peace for yourself. The ego wants you in a constant state of agitation to keep you from embracing your higher self. It convinces you that if you are not always on edge, you can't grow. But you must keep in mind that experiencing this inner turmoil is a choice that you have made by allowing your false self to dominate your life. When you make the choice for peace, you are literally allowing God into your life. Learning how to specifically allow the higher part of yourself rather than your lower identities to be in control of your life. We all long for the peacefulness of being without turmoil and angst. There is a feeling of an inner glow when we know that we are on course, on our sacred path. So why do we so frequently choose the opposite emotions and thoughts and inner beliefs which agitate our minds and cloud our perceptions and distort our relationships? You need to carefully examine your choices that block your experience of peace, of God. Just knowing that peace is always an alternative is a significant awakening. These tools will help to tame the ego when it demands that you pursue separateness or specialness. Replacing the turmoil that you so often choose is then a simple matter of allowing your higher self to take over in any situation where you are about to allow turmoil to enter. Your ego will push you in the direction of the fight, away from peace. You must be ready to see it as it is about to happen and invite your higher self to send your ego a not wanted right now message. I'm fond of this A Course in Miracles quotation concerning ego replacement. You will not find peace except the peace of God. Accept this fact and save yourself the agony of yet more bitter disappointment, bleak despair and doubt. Seek you no further. There is nothing else for you to find except the peace of God. When you have an absence of peace at any time in your life, know that your ego, the false idea of yourself, is what's really responsible. Keeping in mind that every thought has a physical counterpart, you can see that an ego produced constant state of tension that comes with proving yourself, hurrying, chattering, worrying, chasing, acquiring, and competing, also involves tension in the body. High blood pressure, ulcers, skin disorders, headaches, back pain, and even more serious ailments such as cancer, strokes, and liver disorders are the payoffs for the dominance of the ego. These disorders manifest because you allow ego to create turmoil to avoid the peace that is found within. This awareness of the ego's program should help as you move toward restraining ego and getting to know your higher self. The ego, that false idea that we all have of ourselves, wants to maintain this persistent state of inner confrontation for some very solid reasons. When you understand your ego, you are much more apt to work at restraining it. When you know why your ego behaves as it does, you will then be able to make the adjustments necessary for your higher self to have a greater influence in your life. Here are some of the most obvious reasons why your ego keeps you in this state of turmoil rather than peace. Most important, your ego has been with you since childhood. It has been nurtured by almost everyone you've ever known. Generations of those nurturers have also been dominated by their egos. Your ego wants to survive. If it can keep you in a state of inner turmoil, it will block you from knowing your spiritual self. From the ego's perspective, God is a huge threat, so it will do all that it can to keep you from experiencing that inner peacefulness where God's voice is so beautifully clear. Your ego does not want you to change. The idea of yourself as self-important and special nourishes ego, keeping it healthy and operating at full strength. Even though ego itself is an illusion, just a false idea that you carry around with you, it behaves as if it really had a life of its own. Your ego will make every effort to convince you that you do not need to change. In fact, if you're asking yourself why you shouldn't feel special, you are listening to it right now. These are the kinds of thoughts that have kept you from making the changes leading to inner peace. The ego thrives on fear. When you are afraid, you are at the mercy of the ego. Fear will drive you to behave in ways that undermine your sacred self. Your higher self tells you that there is nothing to fear, that love is the answer to everything, and that God is what love is all about. Your loving presence assures you that you do not need to feel guilty or fearful, and that if you do, it will subside when you experience inner peace. When you experience love within, you have no guilt and no fear. You know that everything you are experiencing is in order, 
including your woes, which are your greatest teachers, and the death of your body, which is ordained for all the world of the manifest. You know that death is a reward, not a punishment. Therefore you have nothing to fear unless you listen to your ego encouraging fear and dismissing God. Your ego wants you to be on the move, looking for more things to consume and more possessions to own. The more you are on the move in your life, the less time you will have for knowing your spiritual base. Ego cheers you on to stay busy, to keep moving, and to avoid the inner quest where your ego faces restraint. Your ego wants you to face outward. It wants you to continue facing the wrong way so that you cannot experience the presence of God in your life. By facing away rather than inward, you ensure the strong presence of your ego forever. The consequences are that you will continually feel the pressure to compare yourself with others, the need to defeat others in order to feel powerful or even worthwhile, to have more and better toys, to accumulate more trophies. All of this facing outward is the work of the ego. When you refuse to listen, it shouts that you must be upset when others get ahead of you, that you are worthless when you lose, that being number one is more important than anything, that to settle for less is to admit to being a loser. All of these beliefs are deeply ingrained within you. It is very difficult for you to even imagine not having them because the work of your ego and the egos of so many others have been working overtime convincing you that this is the only way to be. Facing outward brings about a sense of inner conflict and agitation that keeps you pursuing the gold stars that the ego offers. These are a few of the more obvious payoffs your ego uses to keep you in a confrontational rather than a peaceful mood. Keep in mind that you can restrain this ego simply by the power of your own will. All it takes is a determination to live by the dictates of your higher self and a willingness to act on that determination rather than succumb to the easier path of the ego.